welcome to today's lecture this is processing of wool the second topic i mean second lecture on wool processing and this is the last lecture on this wool that is unit 2 in the wool processing one i have already explained about the total steps of processing for wool and i have finished the preliminary processing of wool up to the combing and today i am supposed to discuss after that that is the spinning and making the yarn and after that weaving and making the cloth and finishing etc so at the beginning i am going to recapitulate or repeat the first few processes which i have already explained i am going to again revise them and after that i will go for the actual second part for processing of wool so this uh, this is showing all the steps for processing of wool up to the making of yarns this we have already discussed in the previous lecture that is uh, sorting of wool scouring or cleaning then carding and then there is uh, spinning and to make the yarns in case of woolen system and in the right side for worsted system there we will have a combing an additional step then there is roving spinning and yarn formation this is the uh, total process for wool processing to get the yarn and from the yarn there is weaving and uh, formation of the clothes so this is once again showing the major steps because the wool processing basically coming under the textile technology which is a very very vast subject so to make things more easy to understand i am repeating certain things this is totally a different kind because you don't have any background related to this so here once again you can see the shearing of wool and getting the fleece then washing and then formation of twisted sleever from which by spinning the uh, the yarn is formed and then we get a ball of yarn now about the yarn processing or how to make the yarn so most apparel and fabrics are produced from yarn so what is yarn yarn is a continuous strand of textile fibers filaments or materials in a form suitable for knitting or weaving or otherwise interweaving to form a textile fabric so the yarn is a kind of thread obtained from the mixture of fibers by a process of spinning and then it gets the strength and that thread is used for making the different kind of textile fabric either by knitting or weaving or by other interweaving so yarn is a continuous strand of staple fibers held together in some way by twisting generally that twisting is done through the process of spinning so we are going to understand it in more details now let us understand more about the yarns that is yarns can be different type so now we are mainly focusing on spun yarns that is the yarns obtained through spinning so this has got specific characteristics the spinning yarns they are fuzzy surface greater amount of twist than filament yarns filament yarns means in that case the 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 threads or fibers are very long but here we are discussing about the wool fibers which are very short so these short fibers that pull apart more comfortable on skin than smooth filament smooth filament or artificial filament they will not have that much of comfort and they have low they can be two types this yarns it can be low twist or high twist so when we have low twist it will trap the air inside and that will have more insulation property and gives more warmth as a winter garment and in case of high twist the air holding will be less trapping of air or air permeability will be less so it is more wind resistant so that won't give that much of warmth as a winter garment now about preliminary processing of wool which we have already discussed in the previous lecture today once again some of the things i am going to repeat very quickly 
in this first is the opening that is i told sorting and opening so here it loosens the fibers from compacted bales it cleans that is removes short fibers soil plant debris and other foreign matter and it blends that is from several bales achieves more uniform quality through this process then there is cutting which i have already explained earlier partially aligns fibers and forms them into a soft very weak rope of fibers called a carded sleever so it creates a kind of soft and loose thread like structure which will be made into a yarn by the process of spinning so carding machine what it does revolving cylinder with short wire teeth that remove trash and naps so there is a picture in the previous slide about the carding process and the machine you can see here is few more steps about the preliminary processing before spinning so one is drawing it increases parallelism of fibers and combines several carded or combed slivers into a drawn sliver then combing which we have discussed earlier it aligns long staple fibers in a parallel arrangement removes short fibers and combs sliver more uniform in length so this is in case of long wools in worsted system and then roving that reduces the drawn sliver increases parallel alignment and inserts a small amount of twist before it going for actual spinning in this picture you can see a modern machine for textile purpose for making the cloth that is the modern machine does it through a very quick process now little bit about fiber blends that is mixing different kind of fibers or different kind of yarns or ply so blend means an intimate mixture of different kind of fibers which may differ in types of fiber or composition length diameter or color and they are spun together to make a thread so here the fibers cannot be separated then mixture mixture refers to yarns of different types within a fabric so within a fabric different kind of yarns are mixed one type possibly used as warp while another type is used as weft so this i am going to explain warp is the parallel lines and the weft is the cross lines of uh, yarn which are used during weaving then combination in this case ply yarns are used at least one strand of a ply yarn is of different fiber type from the other strand so there are mixing of the different kind of fiber is done with a ply so previous slide i mentioned about blending so why this blending is done it is to produce fabrics with better combination of performance characteristics or to improve spinning weaving and finishing efficiency number 3 to obtain better texture hand or fabric appearance to minimize fabric cost sometime we can use low cost fiber with another high cost and then we can reduce the cost of the fabric and to obtain cross dyed or unique color effect sometime we can produce different kind of dyes with a unique color so that is possible by mixing the different kind of fibers now about spinning so spinning is the process through which the yarns are made so one of the oldest manufacturing arts is the spinning and advances in engineering and technology have increased its speed and quantity in the old days the spinning used to be done by handmade implements but nowadays there are many modern high tech machineries it is one of the very advanced industry the textile industry in the bottom left you can see the spinning process that is of course in case of cotton but the techniques and technologies are almost similar in case of wool so sometime i could not get proper picture so here sometime i have used the textile spinning machines and technologies related to actual cotton processing in the right side diagram you can see the spinning techniques it could be ring spinning or open end spinning so by ring spinning we can get ring spun yarn and the open end yarn is the another technique so in case of ring spun there is 
carded yarn and combed yarn as i have told in case of woolen processing and worsted processing and in case of open end yarn it can be different type like rotor spinning friction spinning electrostatic spinning air vortex spinning and disc spinning so this blue color these techniques are more developed and used commonly in case of cotton industry for textile technology here once again about spinning the spinning converts the carded or combed wool into yarns of desired count or weight so the long wool after carding undergo the combing and then it undergo spinning and we can get the yarn so in modern textile technology all these things are very advanced machinery is used in the picture right side you can see since the fibers cling and stick to one another it is fairly easy to join extend and spin wool into yarn so fibers as i said previously the sleevers are formed by using many fibers together like a soft loose thread they are further by spinning made into the strong thread as yarn so wool is spun into two types of yarn that is woolen and worsted woolen yarn and worsted yarn as we have told earlier and accordingly there is differences in the process after scouring it in case of woolen system it will go only for carding whereas in case of worsted system it will undergo combing and then only it will be undergoing spinning to make the yarn here we will see the after spinning two kind of yarns we get that is the woolen yarn and worsted yarn we can see a comparison we have mentioned about it in the previous lecture also so in case of woolen yarn the carded process used on the short fibers they are mostly coarse yarn it will produce they will be more fuzzy and less twisted bulky and these yarn made from short staple wool and then woven into thick full bodied materials such as tweeds or blankets and also used for knitting whereas in case of worsted yarn one more process that is combing is used to extract the short fiber short fibers are removed through this combing they are finer yarn smooth with little fudge that is the fudginess is less they are tightly they can be tightly twisted as i mentioned previously the low twisting and high twisting they may be more shining these yarn are woven into fine dress materials and suiting so fine materials on cloths can be prepared and sometime these worsted spun yarns with less twist we can make that is used for knitting into fabrics here once again let us revise the process flow for spinning as i mentioned earlier there is fiber we get either from the sheep or from the in case of other plant origin fibers then it is in the blow room then there is carding process then there is draw frame then there is a speed frame then there is a ring frame and then we get the yarn so this ring frame plays important role for spinning and making the yarn which i am going to explain briefly in the next one so now about the ring frame which is very important for spinning and making the yarn especially in case of general textile industry so spinning process is done by the ring frame machine ring frame converts the bobbin into yarn so the function of ring frame is drop the roving until the required fineness is achieved as i mentioned from the uh, combing Uh, this sleever formation and then it is drafted into roving and those roving is made into the 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 formation of yarn so it twist the drafted strand to form yarn of required count and strength then winding the twisted yarn onto the bobbin for suitable storage so in a in a structure it is winded into a storage or handling uh, purpose so that is for used for further processing for weaving purpose so in the previous slide i told about the spinning process which makes the yarn that is the tight thread which is used for making the clothes by the process of weaving so this the 
woolen yarn is woven into the fabrics now as i have mentioned there are two kind of yarns that is the woolen yarn and worsted yarn so wool manufacturer used two basic weaves the plain weave and the twill the plain weave is used for the woolen yarn so woolen yarns made into fabric using a plain weave that is woolen yarn coming from the short wool and the worsted yarns can create fine fabrics with exquisite patterns using the twill weave which results into the tightly woven smooth fabric so two kind of yarn is used in two kind of weaves that is the plain weave and the twill so i am going to discuss some more details about the weaving process by using different models of weaves or looms and then after weaving there is finishing so like in case of leather processing i told there are so many steps for finishing similarly here also after weaving there are many steps for finishing then only we can get a good quality cloth or garments so after weaving both worsteds and woolens undergo a series of finishing procedure which includes one is fulling that is immersing the fabric in water to make the fibers interlock and tight then there is scrubbing that is a permanently setting the interlock then there is decatting that is for making it proof against the shrinking that is the shrink proofing and then there is bleaching and dyeing so as i mentioned dyeing can be done in case of wool at any stage either as a fiber or as a yarn or as a fabric so this although wool fibers can be dyed before the carding process dyeing can also be done after the wool has been woven into fabric so let us understand what is weaving or knitting development of cloth or fabric from the yarn involves weaving and knitting so through the process of weaving or knitting we can get the cloth or fabric or garment the process of interlacing two sets of yarn at right angles is called weaving so you can see in the picture also so yarn running lengthwise in the loom loom is the machine where the weaving is done and those threads or yarn which is at the parallel they are called as the warp and there is a cross thread which is interlacing with the parallel thread and makes the cloth so those cross threads are called as weft so these two get interlocked alternately and makes the fabric let us see once again in the next slide so in continuation about weaving or knitting the process of knitting involves production of fabrics by interlocking rows of yarns into loops as i mentioned the parallel row and the cross row a new loops are formed they are drawn through those previously shaped loops so this interlooping and the continued formation of new loops produce knitted fabric you can see in the diagram as i mentioned there is parallel threads that is called warp and the cross thread goes in between the parallel threads that is called weft so the parallel threads continuously get separated into up and down so that is called picking and shedding and in between that the cross thread will be passed from left side and right side and there will be a beating or with the help of reed for setting them these parallel threads which makes the cloth so for the details i am going to explain with the help of model looms or system through which the weaving happens and a cloth is formed so now i am going to explain the basics mechanism of weaving so this is little bit difficult because our veterinary student do not have any background about this so with the help of this model i am trying to explain the basic principles of weaving there are three things one is shedding then picking and beating that is the a b and c part of this model so in the a part shedding you can see first two thing one is warp another is weft warp is the parallel threads or yarn and weft is the cross thread so there is a interlocking of parallel thread and the cross thread that makes the cloth 
and there is a structure called reed which pushes this thread to make them tight and compact now there is in the in the shedding and picking so you can see that the parallel threads are alternately separated into upper and lower so if there are 50 parallel threads so alternately 25 threads will be in the upper and another 25 will be bottom in between these two only the cross thread will go that goes through a shuttle so every time one shuttle will take a thread and then there will be a beating then it gets tightening tightening and that then there is again change of the fibers from top to bottom so those who are at the top it goes down and those who are at the bottom it comes up comes up so that is what is called shedding and picking after every time one cross thread goes through the shuttle and then there is a beating to push them compact so that is the basic mechanism for weaving once again i am going to explain in the next slide with more details here once again i am trying to explain the weaving process as i told in the previous slide that is the shedding picking and battening or beating so in the shedding, as I said, there are parallel threads. They have to be alternately separated and one set will go to the up and one set will go down. And in between that only the cross thread will go by the help of shuttle. So work threads are separated forming a shed of the web to pass. There is a, a, a use of a treadle by the human action. These threads get separated into upper and lower and then in the next step there is picking in which a web that is a cross thread is passed through by using a shuttle which is having the thread and this human action is used for passing this thread or sometime with a lever and then we get a complete line uh, on the cloth and in the third there is a battening that is web is pushed up against the fail of the cloth fastening a row of weft. So one more weft is added and the same mechanism is repeated. Only thing is in one step the, the upper threads in the, in, in the warp is changed and it goes down. So continuously it goes up and down. That is the shedding and picking. Shedding and picking. So upper thread goes down, lower thread goes up and in between one cross thread is added and then it is pressed by beating. This is how the weaving process continued and we can get a cloth getting ready. Now about finishing of the fabric. As I mentioned earlier, after the weaving, there are several steps for finishing. So first I am going to tell some of the common process for woolen system and the worsted system about the finishing and then some of the specific important steps of finishing I am going to explain later. So the system of the wool processing determine the type of finishing. As I said there are woolen system for short wool and worsted system for long wool. So in woolen fabric are often brush to raise the ends of the wool fibers above the surface of the cloth in a soft fluffy nap. Because they are short, short wool, so they are brushed and the end of the short wools are raised to the surface and they are called as nap. The naps range from the lightly brushed surface of a flannel to the deep pile effect of fleecy coatings. So those naps are later removed by process of clipping. The deep naps are produced by passing the fabric over cylinders covered with fine metal wires and small hooks. These hooks pull fiber ends to the surface and create the nap. So this is the process, important process of finishing in case of woolen fabric prepared from woolen yarn. Now finishing in case of worsted system of processing, that is the long wool. So worsted fabric go through less radical changes in finishing, although the characteristic crisp finer appearance of worsted fabric is sometimes enhanced by special treatments. Clear finishing is shearing or singeing process 
which gives the fabric a smooth surface and a crisp feeling unfinished or state fabric is lightly napped to give them a woolen like surface producing a fabric with the softness of a woolen and the firmness of worsted so here it is finished in such a way so it will be soft like woolen fabric but the firmness will be for worsted so these are the processing finishing in case of worsted fabric now we will discuss some of the very important finishing process or steps very specifically so one is fulling it is the process of controlled shrinkage of a fabric that is called fulling or milling so here the moisture heat and friction are applied causing the fabric to shrink to the controlled amount in both length and width this tightens the weave and improves the hand or texture of the fabric so this is a process we applied with moisture and heat and some kind of friction with special kind of machines which makes the cloth a lot of difference in their hand value or texture and the tightening of the fibers so this is a called fulling so here is another specific finishing treatment that is called crabbing the process of crabbing sets the cloth and yarn twist by rotating the fabric over cylinders through hot and then cold water baths the cloth is held finely and tightly to prevent shrinking so this treatment mainly is to prevent the shrinking and the cloth is passed through first hot and then cold baths and they are kept in tightening pulling by the cylinders so the effectiveness of crabbing depends on the tension the duration of treatment the composition of crabbing liquor or water the temperature of the water bath and the ph of the liquid and in the right side you can see a machine which is showing the uh, spreading and holding the cloth in a tensed condition now sponging is another treatment as a finishing sponging is a pre shrinking process achieved by dampening the fabric with a sponge and rolling it in moist muslin it is applied to woolen fabric before cutting to prevent possible contractions of the fabric in the finished garment caused by stresses created in manufacturing so this treatment helps in preventing the shrinking of the cloth when it is made into garments up during the manufacturing so london shrinking is a common term is a popular sponging treatment which prevents shrinkage during manufacturing so in this case in the bottom left picture you can see the sponging process first it is subjected to vacuum and then a steam pot is applied and that's the treatment of sponging which prevents the further shrinking when the garments are made in the right side bottom you can see a machine for sponging of the fabric now bleaching bleaching is another important treatment in finishing bleaching is the process which is used for the removal of color impurities of the fabric if the wool is to be dyed to especially bright or pale shades or when it is to be spun and woven into white yarns and fabrics then it can be whitened by bleaching this is usually carried out on the yarn or fabric rather than on the loose wool fiber hydrogen peroxide bleaching is most commonly used for the wool fiber wool is immersed for several hours in a dilute solution of warm hydrogen peroxide the colored impurities are destroyed and the effects of the bleaching are permanent sulfur dioxide is also used for bleaching of the wool as i have mentioned earlier in case of wool this bleaching can be done before even yarn is formed for the fiber but it can be done after forming the yarn or after making the fabric 
before even making the dyes or applying the dyes chemical finishes chemical finishes means application of chemicals to the wool or woolen fabric the amount and type of chemicals is determined by the end products use that is what kind of fabric we want to make so this can be done before making the weaving or fabrics the process that qualifies superwash certification is a mild chemical treatment applied to the fiber to form a permanent microscopic film of resin which spreads evenly over the fiber surface coating the scales of the wool fiber the finish reduces friction and fiber entanglement and eliminates felting shrinkage that usually occurs if wool garments are machine washed and dried so this chemical treatment helps in preventing the shrinkage or entanglement of the fiber in the fabric wool can also be treated chemically to make it highly resistant to moths stamps and moisture and fire so this kind of chemical treatment gives an extra property to the fabric against the moths or even absorbing moisture or catching fire etc now i have already finished about the different treatment and finishing steps on the fabric after the weaving now there is a final quality control quality control inspection is a part of the final step in fabric manufacturing a thorough examination of the cloth identifies imperfections such as broken threads variation in color and other undesired effects these are removed and the area is reoven by hand if necessary so once again right side you can see the flow of operations up to the uh, weaving and then final fabric preparation and finishing now i have already finished about the processing and weaving and finishing of the woolen cloth now i just want to mention about the uses since this is the last lecture about the wool uses of wool fiber in addition to clothing wool has been used for blankets horse rugs saddle cloths carpeting felt wool insulation and upholstery wool felt covers piano hammers and it is used to absorb odors and noise in heavy machinery and stereo speakers ancient greeks lined their helmets with felt further uses of wool fiber wool ha has also been traditionally used to make cover cloth diapers over the diaper it woolen cloth can be used for covering that helps in preventing the absorption of water wool felted and treated with lanolin is water resistant air permeable and slightly antibacterial so it resists the build up of odor merino wool has been used in baby sleep products such as baby wrap blankets and infant sleeping bags here is another special use of wool in australia they have developed special kind of applications of wool for the bulletproof jackets a blend of wool and kevlar that is the synthetic fiber widely used in body armor was lighter cheaper and better in damp conditions than kevlar alone kevlar when used alone lose about 20% of its effectiveness when wet so required an expensive waterproofing process wool increased friction in a vest with 28 to 30 layers of fabric to provide the same level of bullet resistance as 36 layers of kevlar alone so this is an application of woolen fiber in case of army so we are at the end of today's lecture today uh, i have finished about the second part of wool processing at the beginning i have tried to re revise the preliminary processing of processing of wool which i have discussed in the previous lecture after that more 
details i have discussed about the spinning and preparation of the yarn two different kind of yarn and their differences and their uh, requirements and then i have discussed in details about the weaving the process of weaving and details about that and after that i have discussed their general finishing and certain specific steps for the finishing of the woven cloth or fabric and little bit i have mentioned about the use of woolen products or use of wool so this is the end of uh, theory lecture about the unit 2 wool the the wool part is uh, i have not gone much details particularly the processing they have mentioned only about the outlines of wool processing so as such wool comes under the textile technology which is a very very vast subject which is a four years btech degree but i have tried to cover maximum possible and that should be enough for the veterinary students thank you and further details you can learn from my book or from my lecture notes thank you